money, protecting your finances during tough economic times. Last week was a bumpy ride for our struggling economy. From the Dow dropping more than 500 points to the unprecedented downgrading of the country's credit rating. But how will that impact your own finances? And how can you protect your money? Vera Gibbons is an MSNBC financial analyst. Vera, good morning. Good morning. Well, this is the day I guess we'll learn what this credit downgrade, uh, what effect it will have mm -hmm. on the markets. What is the fallout expected to be? Well, hopefully we won't see the sea of red that we saw last week, right, with the Dow tanking 700 points. But I think the market will look beyond the credit downgrade and focus on the fundamentals, which are extremely weak. We've got a slew of issues facing us right now. We've got you know, the European debt crisis, we've got concerns about the global economy, growth here is essentially nil, so you have growing concern and growing talk about a possible double dip. You use a technical word, you said there's a lot of craziness <laughs> in the markets right now. And how real are the fears that we could see a double dip recession, that is, of the country going back into well, recession? Some economists have put that those odds at, you know, as much as 50-50 at this point, given the downgrade. But nevertheless, to protect yourself in this type of environment, I think to alleviate some of the anxiety, it's nice to have a nice cash position, particularly if you're in equities. And that's why something like dividend paying stocks look particularly attractive right now in economy that is slowing. Well, that was our first tip that mm -hmm. you give people, find these dividend paying stocks. Why is that important and, and how do you find well, them? You can get exposure through your 401k at work just mm -hmm. by investing in a good solid mutual fund, but that's the way to go. I think in this market it's really about the preservation of capital. All right, we've also talked about the importance of having an emergency fund. It's always important, but you say all the more so now. More so now. You know, only about a third of us have an allocated emergency fund, and about half of us who have these emergency funds said we'd still be hard-pressed to actually come up with $2,000 if we lost our job or had some sort of other emergency. And that's crazy considering it's taking, you know, over 40 weeks on average to find a new job. That is at a record high. So how much should be in an emergency ideally, fund? Ideally. Ideally a year's worth of savings. Okay. After this deal in Washington, we know the U.S. avoided <laughs> a default, but of course there's also been a, this credit downgrade. How will that impact the average consumer, well, if at all? It's not good for confidence, right? I mean, confidence takes a big hit. I think Americans are feeling down and out. The psyche of the American consumer is pretty low. I think that they feel, to some extent, they're on a losing team. But beyond sort of the psychological impact, there are economic consequences, and then possible financial ramifications, because if it costs the government more to borrow money, chances are it's going to cost you to borrow more. So everything could go up from mortgage rates to personal student loans to credit card rates. And the job situation could get even worse as well because if it costs companies more to borrow money, you know, they're going to say we can't possibly add to our headcount. And that's because the, the rates for mortgages or credit cards or student loans are tied in some cases? They're tied to treasuries. Treasuries. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why the, the, the cost of borrowing for the U.S. government goes up. It goes up for all of us. Right, so that's what we need to, need to be watching. So one thing you might want to consider doing in light of what's going on here is consider refinancing your mortgage. You might want to also consider paying down your credit card debt because if rates go up, and some experts tell me that rates on the mortgages and rates on credit cards could go up by a full percentage point, you know, you're going to be hit. If rates on credit cards go up by 1%, that new rate is going to apply to all new purchases, and they only have to give you 45 days notice. So maybe you're saying go do the refinancing. If you were thinking about doing a lock-in, these still relatively They're low They're still low, about rates. 4% right now. So you want to do this perhaps sooner rather than later. Okay, another of your tips is maintain a good credit rating. Well, it's more if important you can. than you can. It's more important now than ever to maintain good credit. I mean... 720 is the rate you need now to get the best rate on your loans, according to research from Zillow Mortgage Marketplace. You know, before the housing collapse, it was 620 not too long ago. 700 was considered good. We are in a market where credit is very tight, and it could get even tighter given the credit downgrade. So how do you keep your credit score in good shape? Obviously, you've got to pay your bill. Well, paying your bills on time is the most important thing, right? So pay your bills on time, watch the amount of debt, don't have too much down on your credit card. Ideally, you don't want to use more than 10% of your available credit, if at all possible. You want to have a nice, responsible mix of credit as well. All right, and let's talk about employment. You mentioned we did actually one sliver of good news, relatively speaking, was that the jobs report was not as bad as it was expected. The unemployment rate actually ticked down uh, a tenth of a percent to 9.1. What's your best advice for job seekers right now? Well, to be honest with you, the people who are finding jobs in this economy are people who are totally reinventing themselves, moving into different industries, trying entirely new things that they never thought they would even see themselves ever doing. 
and they're going for the part-time, the freelance, the contract work. That's sort of the name of the game now, and that's definitely the wave of the future. You know, no benefits, no 401k, no nothing, but at least you have a job. Yeah, and you're saying once you have that job, if you're lucky enough to have it, make yourself indispensable. No more, I don't do windows. No, right? uh, no time for excuses, don't come in late. I mean, announced layoffs were up 60% in July over June. They're now at a 16-month high. All right, Vera Gibbons, MSNBC Financial Analyst. It's good to have you Thanks, here. Thank you.